We're going to do a practice now. The, the, the way we do this, it's, it's, you've got to do it reasonably fast. Um, <coughs> it's, it's a participatory census. So form groups of, how many are we all together in here? Um, I, I guess form groups of, form groups of three. Okay. You can form any, any group of three, it doesn't matter. And what you do is you create an imaginary community with 20 households. So everybody has 20 households. I'm just, this is just to make the thing manageable. Draw a map showing the households. You can either use something like a post-it and for each household mark on the categories or you can use seeds and there are lots of different seeds here. But if you use seeds, you need to have different sorts of seeds for different categories. It's quite fun doing seeds, so I mean if you want to do it. If you want to do it with chalk on the ground, you can go out here and there is some chalk here. So you can do it with chalk on the ground if, if you'd like to do that. Otherwise you do it on paper in here and there's paper down there and there are pens. Um, <coughs> what you do is having you, you draw your community and you draw in the 20 where the 20 households are. And then <coughs> you have you have five categories. You have men, women, girls and boys. And each one of these would be a different colour scene. And then there are disabled. Now the disabled may be men or women or girls or boys. So don't add the disabled in. You can, you can show them, but don't add them in for the population token. But I'm including disabled because they tend to, that category tends not to be thought about and what people actually mean about by disabled. <coughs> so you do that and then you name your community, give it a name, and when you've got your totals, you come up, and I will put a, a sheet up here, you come up here and you write in your totals, and then we'll add them up. Is that right? Is it, is it clear? Ready? Steady? Go! <laughs> You can see the result of this. This is the same phenomenon as this. This was 132 villages, and it was with many, it was with 13 different categories, including social group and so on. Um, and who was receiving services. <coughs> but they were marked in a standard way in all 132. On the ground first and then sometimes on paper. So you, you've done it. Um, and uh, over just before lunch maybe someone someone can add these tokens up here and see what, what we've got in terms of um, gen gender balance. I think there are there are more women than men. Um, I think that the girls and there are slightly more girls than boys. Um, and the disabled are really quite few. And one of the reasons why I asked you to do disabled is because this is a very interesting question of perceptions. Because our perceptions of disabled are people who you know, they've had polio, or they're blind, or they're deaf, or something. In communities generally, disabled is a much more inclusive category. And it includes very old people who can't really look after themselves. Um, and it in includes people with conditions which we wouldn't regard as being 
disabled in a northern sense. So your numbers here are much lower than I expected this, so that I could say this. Transparently, <laughs> manipulative. And it's called facilitating. <coughs> So that I could point this out, because if this were done in the community, these would probably be between 10 and 15 percent. But it's something you can test for yourself. Has anyone any experience of this? Yeah, I mean, I've done that, you know, based on survey on the disability. So even the standard says like 10, 10 persons at 10 in 100. So what we did in Bangladesh, it was actually more. In that, in a survey, we got almost like 14 on the kind of average. Mm. 14. So it's much higher. Yeah. But then, of course, how you classify also that sort of mental disability you know, was not Mental disability, uh, chronic sickness. Exactly. And uh, <coughs> um, particularly if there's a man who can't work at hard physical things, yeah. he would get classified as disabled. I think more than more than women, but that's that's a generalisation which I couldn't substantiate. Well done. But anyway, you can see you can see that it works, and that you can generate good numbers in this sort of way because you were cross-checking one another, weren't you? <laughs> and you were putting your hands in, um, and everybody. I mean, my observation was that everyone was taking part in this. Uh, so that was good and well done. That's a participatory census, which can be very, very accurate. And it can include other categories of things. Because one group was, was um, having a, a very rich household, and other households. And that's exactly, I mean, well done. I stopped you doing it, because it was a, going to slow you up. <coughs> but it's, it's fascinating that in Rwanda, uh, well, I, I won't go and point it out now, but it's, it's over there on the right-hand side. We'll, we'll look at that later. <coughs> but in Rwanda, in, there are almost 15,000 colleen. Has anyone worked in Rwanda? No. Almost 15,000. And over five years, they went through a participatory process, which was in a program they called the day. And each of these communities has got a cloth map, so it's permanent, not like a piece of paper. They have a cloth map, which has got their population, and has got them categorized into three wealth groups. The, the poor people, the middle, and the, and the upper. And amazingly, they have tried to use these in a policy way for identifying who is eligible for a certain form of health insurance and who is eligible for assistance in going to university. But the finding has been that once you start using them in this way, they're liable to get manipulated. So uh, there's a learning going on there. Still, it is very remarkable that they've managed to do this and that they have this large number of, of, of maps. Um, <coughs> one of the articles in the Who Counts book is by Ashish Shah and is about Ubadehi and about this approach and aggregation from the approach. So if you get that book, do you can, you can, you can buy it, I'm sure, from the um, bookshop after lunch or after, tomorrow after lunch. Um, <coughs> do, do have a look at that one by Ashish Shah, among, among others. <coughs> <coughs>